function by Diana Huang. It was morning when a white hoodie wearing figure stepped out of a small RV. After locking up the, con the container, the figure turned around to reveal wisps of black hair blowing around sunglasses and a dark blue face mask that covered the entire face. Gusts of wind blew sand sideways from the surrounding dunes, and the figure pulled the strings to close the hood tighter. Walking along the concrete sidewalk next to the sand-dusted road, the figure's hands retracted into sleeves and jammed inside the hoodie's front pouch. Faded blue jean leggings were tucked into socks inside sneakers dirtied by the sand. A worn-out black backpack was clipped tightly around the torso. Once in a while, headlights appeared in the distance and the hooded figure would hide behind one of the corroded vehicles abandoned alongside the road. Eventually, the figure made it up the steps of a hill to a grassy field behind a chain-linked fence. Through the fog-like sandstorm, a black LED billboard displayed red-letter words, The safest time to be on the road is also the most dangerous. The figure made it to the door of a one-story brown brick building. As the person tugged at the me metal handle, the door groaned as it swung open just wide enough for the figure to shuffle into the darkness. The room was dimly lit by the light of the small tinted windows on the opposite side of the room. After shaking sand off the hoodie, the figure quietly slipped into a set of table and chair and sat in silence looking into the dark void. When the, the arrows on the clock pointed to eight, there was a click and a buzz as fluorescent lights came on, revealing an empty classroom. A low knocking came from the metal air duct above as the heating and air conditioning unit sputtered and coughed at, as it turned on. In front of the student, a slouched human form suddenly sat up straight and looked towards the student. Welcome, the air level is safe, said the androgynous mechanical form, who was built to look and sound appealing to all genders. The hoodie was pulled back to reveal a black ponytail. The face mask was removed to reveal the dry, weather-worn skin of an adolescent girl. Her sunglasses became clear, revealing obsidian wing-swept eyes. Good morning, Melody Song. How are you today? chimed the android. I'm fine, thank you, said Melody. Good to hear. Have you completed your homework? Yes, I have, said Melody, as she pulled a computer tablet out of her hoodie pouch. She tapped and swiped at the surface. Homework received. Stand by as I analyze. Very good. You have a clear understanding of the material. I am sending you new reading material and homework assignments. Do you have any questions? Melody tapped on her tablet. Files received, she answered. Yes. Why am I the only one here? You are not the only one. I am here with you. I mean, why am I the only organic person here? Where are the others? Are you lonely? said the android as it turned on gentle music to drown out sounds of the sandstorm outside. Nope, I'm fine, said Melody, embarrassed at the idea. You are clearly agitated. Your heart rate is elevated. You need to lie down, said the android as it stood to approach her. I'm fine. Please stop. Don't run the mental health program on me, said Melody, getting flustered as she stood up to back away. Stay put. Don't be scared. You are safe with me. The android opened the door to a little room in the back. There were three other doors connected to three other classrooms. Melody could see those rooms were empty except for their androids on standby, waiting for their students to come. Her teacher opened a storage cabinet and took two items from a dwindling supply of water bottles and non-perishable packaged foods. She spotted other items in storage, such, such as a first aid kit, and flashlights. There was also a cot with neat, a neatly folded blanket in the tiny room that used to be a prep room for teachers, a timeout space for students, and a safe room during, during campus lockdowns. I'm not scared or lonely, but you can't go with me when the sun starts to set, right? 
That is correct. I was designed to be an EST, Emergency Substitute Teacher, when organic teachers began to retire or disappear suddenly in droves. My power supply is tied to the solar power unit of this facilities. Yours is not, said her teacher, offering food and water to her. Thank you, Melody obliged, drinking the water in hopes of speeding up the mental health program she triggered. How is your power supply? I'll go clear the sand off the panels when the sandstorm is over. That is not necessary. There is enough power stored to last a few more days. I appreciate the thought. Very considerate of you, Melody. I just want to know what happened to the other organics. The organics al altered the composition of Earth's atmosphere. There were diseases and famine along with the drought. Most organics migrated north to the polar regions where the climate is moderate and fresh water plentiful. plentiful. I have anticipated your need for other organics someday. Do you wish to join the organics in the north now? The most I can provide you are maps, uploading, and supplies for the journey. I don't plan to. I'll stay with you. How long? As long as possible. The other ESTs cannot run their programs. My program runs because you are here. For that, I am grateful you chose me. Your overall well-being puts me into action. I problem-solve to keep you safe, healthy, and prepare you for the challenges you will face as an adult on your own. This is my function. What is your function? I don't know. Just trying to stay alive, I guess. Being alive is a function. I know, as an organic, you need more than that. Are you happy? Things could be better, I guess. I'm all right. What do you do when the sun sets and I have to turn off for the night? With the sandstorm, I have to leave early today. Of course, I will miss your company. I really don't need anybody else, although there will be an inside, undesirable empty space in my program the day I no longer see you. My function is to see you outgrow the need for me. That is something you don't have to worry about. Why? Melody unzipped her backpack and pulled out electronic devices such as solar panels, car parts, lithium batteries from computer hard drives, and tools like wire cutters, or a soldering gun, and duct tape. I've been working on a, a, adapting a portable power supply for you. Want to get out of here? See the world? Can you help me put this together?